morning, everyone, and welcome to Viva Cafe con Leche. I am the badass Buddha, Lori Monaco, and uh, welcome. It is a beautiful day. Facebook, hold on, let me fix this. Oh, my goodness. I don't know why it happens like right when the intro ends. I wish it would just happen when it was in the middle of the intro, and then we could fix it right on the on the fly. But give me a moment, everybody. So good morning for those of you that are on YouTube. We thank you for being here. We thank you for jumping on so early. Um, that is the beauty of YouTube is you could actually come on before we start the show. And uh, we are now live again with Facebook. So thanks everybody for being here. I don't know about up north, but it is beautiful here in the south. It is uh, already 52 degrees. It's sunny today, um, although it is supposed to drop tomorrow and uh, the day after that. So Wednesday and Thursday, it's supposed to go back to the 40s, but then it's going to go back up again. But we've had nothing but phenomenal weather. It was like 70 yesterday, not humid. It was just perfect. And um, yeah, so it's a good day to get out and do stuff, hike, yard work, flowering, gardening, all that stuff. Anyway, good morning, my beautiful. Look at you. Good morning. Buenos dias. You know, it's not. It's kind of gloomy today. And they said expect high winds by 8 p.m. today. It's going to rain at noon. You know, it's it's that beautiful beautiful um i ain't ready i ain't ready for you spring is trying to tell us so yeah it's um it's one of my favorite type of days gray and gloomy so knock it all out i mean for those that can do what they can make it do what it do and milagros buenos dias milagros chanel kathy i believe gail's on yeah right yes welcome 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 yes you know what Eight months ago, I just decided to nip all my hair off. It was very courageous. I knew I wasn't going to really like it, but I embraced my decision um, to do something different. And I was tired of the grades coming in. It was just a whole bunch of stuff. But I also did it um, to test myself. What am I capable of? I know what I've been capable of, but, you know, our hair is our crown, and um, so a lot of people tend to keep it. And if you ever were one to read my blogs, I always wrote about my long, silky black hair because I loved it. And um, sometimes we need to separate from stuff we hide behind because that's what I did. So now, eight months later, I went back to black. And I, but I left my little Cruella de Vil streak. But when I wake up in the morning, it just looks like Skunkville. So <laughs> it's beautiful. I get different versions of me every time. But I'm loving it. It was a hard process to keep that original silver here still there without anything getting in it. But, you know, I just suggest since today's thing is really important that we realize um, do what you want to do. Do what you need to do for you. If you want to do something, try it. It may not be what it is, but you learn so much in that process. And it's courageous. And it's like, oh, Maron, what did I do? And it's like, fuck it. It's so many things. There's so many phases of you. And then you know what the most beautiful, beautiful part of it all is? Badass. The most beautiful part of it all is you have a choice to make a change. Yep. And that's what you figure out through it all. It's the choices we choose to make for us in our lives. And I guess that was my biggest takeaway. I chose to shave it all off. I chose to rock it for eight months. And then that regrowth was really, mm. and then I chose to say, okay, I had enough of it because I am alive, and in that this life, I get to make choices that are suitable for me. So, buenos dias. <laughs> um, and this is actually, that's a really good segue into the conversation today. Today is, uh, so we are in April, so welcome April. Yesterday I, was April Fool's. I worked out on April Fool's Day, and it was a hellacious workout. But you do. a good workout for April Fool's I love Day. it. Oh, I love it. Um, but th- so this is the month of um, what did we call it? Hold on, I had it in my head. 
uh, the living yeah. month. So yeah. April is the month of living. Um, so everything that we're going to focus on has to do with life, with living our lives. Um, and today's conversation, we're going to actually start off very calmly. It's called the pause. Um, and what we're going to discuss today is knowing when to pause, why to pause, and for how long. Um, and it's about centering self. So we're not talking about pausing because of fear. We're not talking about pausing because of you know, that you, you don't want to go on anymore. You don't know who you are and what you want. We've already worked on who you are and what you want. And if, if you're still working on that and then continue, and it's going to change, it's dynamic, it's transient. It's just, it, it flows, you know? So what you might want today isn't necessarily what you're going to want two years from now, but today starts you on your path from, for two years from now. And so it always starts with the present moment. The key is, is that we don't go backwards. The looking to the past is only just to acknowledge what happened, uh, flourish in memories and be joyful about past wonderful things that have happened. Um, thinking about the stuff that might not have been that wonderful and what we learned from it, but that's it. It's just to go there to look at it and then come right back to the present moment and how it's affected you today. And then today is what creates our tomorrow. But sometimes we have to start with a pause. We have to start it where we sit and we just, we are in that moment of who we are at this moment in time. And from there, we move forward. The problem is, is that we often don't take enough pauses. You know, when you're really contemplating something, when you're really upset about something, when something is happening to you, um, or things aren't going in the way that you want to, we don't stop and ground ourselves long enough and connect to our higher power. And we don't sit because when we do that, it allows information to come in and lets us know that we are in the right direction. And so when you feel yourself getting into that headspace, oh my God, am I doing this right? I'm, you're frustrated, you're upset. You're, you're feeling like you want to give up. This isn't working. When was the last time you paused? And technically, if we did this every single day, if we took time in the morning, if we, if we got up just 10 minutes early every morning and used that morning, we sit up in bed and we just pause. You could call it prayer. You could call it meditation. You could do both, or you could just sit there and just allow your mind to be and connect. And that makes yes. a big difference because it, it, it sets the, the tone for you for the day and for the future. It, it really does. You got to pause for the pause in your life. Got to pause for the pause. If you, if you, um, hey puppy, or Janice in the house, if you don't take the time out for you, you know what I've seen that do in people? It builds their expectations and how others have to show up for them. So you have to take a pause. What am I doing for me right now? And I don't care what you do. You can walk in place. You can spin. Sometimes just spinning. I sway a lot when I'm thinking about something. But you pause, you take a deep breath. People, you know what? On top of pausing, badass, people don't take deep breaths. They breathe. Yes. Breathing. Yeah. But they don't take a deep breath. Breath. You, pause too. you know, I was talking to my son in law, Janice, who just came on, and we were talking about that. He goes, You know, even my watch reminds me to take a deep breath, and I don't. And oh, I'm currently in pause mode. There you go. When we take a deep breath, it releases a lot. It's especially I tell people when you're in pain, just take a deep breath to where it hurts and then let it out slowly. But, you know, we're gluttons for pain, I think, most of the time. But I think when we just pause, don't fucking think about nothing, just pause. Sometimes that sets up the thing. You know, badass, you were talking about your workout. And Chanel says she fooled herself into working out yesterday. And I thought that was hilarious. I just had to say it because I forget, man. Thing. Um, it is it is really amazing. And thank you because sometimes it takes one person to re to say, I, you know, I worked out yesterday. And it was what? It was what? April Fool's Day. 
No. That was hard. It was challenging. You said a word. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> hellacious or something like that. Um, oh, did I say hellacious? Did I? Did I? I was being dramatic. It was <laughs> tough. It was a, definitely a tough workout. But I also went hiking on Sunday for Easter. I took, my kids and I went hiking um, in, at this place that's about 25 minutes from the house. And it was just awesome. It's just, it was loaded with uh, waterfalls and and it was a four mile hike. It was two miles up, two miles back or a little over four. And it was challenging. It was, you know, you were definitely having to pull yourself up and there were rocks mm -hmm. and things you had to walk over. And it was, um, it was a lot of fun and it was a beautiful day for it. So I'm, I'm leaning on the fact that I was still exhausted from Sunday and then I worked out yesterday. Um, that's why it was so challenging, but it, it was, but most everybody said that it was a challenging workout. Um, but I wanted to to add something to what you were saying is when we take that moment to pause, you know, if you are in that headspace where you're really down on yourself and you're getting frustrated and things aren't working, you feel that things aren't working out or they're going slower than you want to. And I'm saying all this because this is has been, this was me on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> um, the pause is important because it, you're giving yourself that space and that grace. And if your mind will not shut off, if you keep in that pause, you keep thinking about the stuff that's frustrating you, that is when you have to add gratitude to it. The moment you start talking and or thinking in your head or saying out loud what you're grateful for or writing it down, it's going to shift you. Because the reality is this, is that we often get caught up in what's going wrong, what's not going the way we want it to to the level where we we just completely don't see the good stuff around us. And uh, and I also had a really lovely conversation with one of our uh, previous authors from Her Badass Story. Um, I had reached out to all of them because we're doing Her Badass Story 4. We're still looking for authors. I extended it because we're not getting uh, the authors to sign up as fast as I had hoped. But that's okay because I, I left myself a really big wide space to do so. So we have till the end of April. So if you know anybody who wants to be in there, just uh, reach out to me. There is an investment uh, to let you know, but if you know anybody who wants to share their story, we'd love to have them on there. But anyway, I reached out to all the authors and uh, one of a couple of them got back to me and uh, set up times to chat because I haven't spoken to some of them. And, uh, and it was so appropriate. It was just appropriate timing. We spoke Sunday morning and I listened to her, what she was, you know, everything that's happening in her life. And then we went on to mine and I'm telling her how I'm feeling lately. And I'm hearing myself say it too. And I'm also feeling sad that I'm saying it because the, I could hear the frustration in my voice. And, and she was so insightful and I was so appreciative. And I said to her, I'm like, you know, no, there's no coincidences. Like things happen for a reason. You know, the fact that you decided to speak to me. Um, at this time was, I needed that. And I really appreciate that. And that's the beauty of it is that when, as I'm speaking to her, I'm thinking in my head about, you know, there's so much to be grateful for. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm focused, focused so much on the things that aren't happening. And then wouldn't, you know, like, wouldn't, you know, I get a call yesterday. Uh, one of the things I was saying was that I have not yet had a, any patients down here. Like nobody has come in to, to sign up to be a patient. And uh, and wouldn't you know, yesterday I gave a phone call from some woman who found me on Google and I have my first patient down, officially down here on Wednesday. So it's, it's so interesting that the moment you just shift your energy and that's what the pause is about. The pause, well, the pause isn't just about shifting energy. The pause is also about acknowledging your power. It's about acknowledging your vulnerabilities. It's about acknowledging things that you still need to work on on yourself. It's about it's about celebrating your life, um, honoring self. And we, how many times do you do that in the morning or in a day? How many times do you stop and just be with yourself to center yourself and find the joy in your life. I'm, a, I'm asking everyone, like, do you do this on a daily basis? Mm. Well, for myself, I do. I'm very, um, Pagan sent us stars. Thanks Pagan. We appreciate it. 
Hi, Mama. It's my it's niece. Yaya. It's yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, um, I get, I never get like stuck, you know, why isn't this happening? You know, I get stuck on, on when people do things and whether they realize they're saying something. And just the other day I was asking myself, am I being petty about these certain individuals who claim certain things that are not theirs or they, they, and you know, I am, so I get in a space where is it petty? Is it not petty? And, and they don't see it. Like I, I'll speak to them and it's like, they can see what, what someone else is doing, but they don't see what they're doing. And it's, it's quite comical at some point. And so last night I was sitting with myself preparing to speak today. And the pause for me is that, you know, I, I am who I am and I handle my situations accordingly. I do get angry sometimes. Sometimes it just comes out of nowhere when, when people who I've been kind to seem to think that it's okay for them to act a certain kind of way. And I think they just like grow into it. And so I, I do, um, my, it, 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 there's certain things about me that's mine that people cannot um, forget. And there's certain things that if I've invited you to something, it, you're an invite. You're always going to be the invite. You're not going to be like a CEO delegates downward. He's still the CEO of the company. He still gets the matters. That's right. He just has He's not involved. inviting somebody to take over. You know, so, <laughs> so there's certain things. But, you know, so I... Um, I have done such a great, grand change in my life from how I was seven years ago. Um, I can say seven years just to give or take a year, but yeah, no, don't give. It take a year or two off, five between five to seven years that I've done a total flip. My son-in-law's on here. He can tell you I've always been that one. I've always been the, oh shit, Margie's here type of person. And I guess, you know, it's like when I self-isolated and I took the pause out of life outside of me, but I was so invested within me that, you know, I say it as a joke on here, how I healed so much. I went to the, all the way to the other end of the spectrum where I didn't like people. And I say it in a joking matter, but it became such a, peaceful way of me being with me, loving who I always was, sharpening those tools or locking some away that I didn't like to be around people. I couldn't, the chatter, the, the bullshit that would come out their mouths, the stupid stuff they were worrying about that either hasn't happened yet or happened five years ago. And that's why discernment became such an important word for me because I was like, I don't want to be around these people. And so I then I, I reached a point where I had to pause and say, am I being selfish? Am I behaving? I don't want uh, myself to think that myself thinks I'm better. And it wasn't even that. It was just that I would not, I did not want to tolerate certain type of stuff. So the pause for me was evaluating what I wanted to let in. And and that, that's so with this pettiness of so when I came to this, I think sometimes um, if anybody here can agree, there's nothing more truer than when people say, don't take my kindness for weakness. Don't take that what I've allowed for you to bask in, whether, whether it's minimal or whether it's huge, um, as though, you know, you don't uh, allow yourself to believe because I've been kind that it's for you to take. It's for you to share. It's for you to bask in because it's going to come a point where I'm, you know, you pause long enough to get your ducks in a row to say you're out, you're out, you're out. And then that's when the real Margie comes in. And I'm just trying to use discernment. I'm trying to take that pause in life and say, am I being petty? And you know what? Last night I said, I'm, I am being petty. I know who I am. I know what I do. What I'm going to do is this. And that's what we do in life. So you got to pause for every part in your life to realize who's who and where the fuck they belong. And sometimes people get too comfortable because I'm like, oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. And the pausing helps with everything. It helps with growth. 
And growth means knowing where to place people in your life. You know, it comes with expanding your way of thinking like, oh, okay, I was stuck here, but now I see it differently. It comes with accepting new light that's being offered from a direction you never even looked in. When you take that pause, it's like you're going, what is it? I always get confused, a 180 or 360. When you 360 this, is a complete circle, 180 is the, wrong, the other direction. Okay, 180, so 180 is going the other direction, 360 yeah. is going in a circle. <laughs> okay, so when you do the 360, you know, take off your glasses. Take off anything that's obstructing your view. And look at everything with clarity and look at everything without judgment. Just look at it for what it is. If we were to look at our lives for what it is, we would know exactly what we need to work on. And that's where the pause comes in. So that's yeah. why when you're feeling angry over something, identify why am I angry? Why is this person making me angry? Am I being petty? Is this a low point in my, in, in my vibration that I didn't realize like came down a bit? Or is it what it is? And you know what? It was a low point for me. You know why? Because I, I don't have hair on my tongue. I never had a problem saying it. And you know what helps when you ask somebody, this is what's going on. What do you think? And then they share. And then you sit with that. And then you say, you know what? It needs to be approached. It needs to be. And then, but right now, it's not important. Sometimes we take on tasks right away that are not important. And then we forget what's important in our lives. So the pause helps you in many different ways. And I'm thinking we need to pause daily and we need to look around. What is what? Okay, this isn't happening. And I get what you're saying, Buddha, because when when I when I went um, to where the art studio is, it was for a whole different way. It was to, it was to rent a spot to start my coffee shop. And then they didn't have any spots. So I was, it was a bummer. And then they said, but I have this. And I'm like, all right, then I'll take it. And I didn't realize how quick it was. It didn't bother me, did it? Like, damn, when am I going to start my coffee shop? Yes. But did it stop me or made me go in a whirlwind to say, oh, uh -uh. no, it's a pause. Like, okay, so this isn't happening right now, but I can do this. And even that scared me because it was commitment. If anybody knows me, knows that I like to be a nomad. So it was a year commitment. But let me tell you, pausing, pausing, pausing. We pause. And when we pause, when we're preparing for the show, tell me about us. When we pause, the best ideas come. Well, what do you, I don't yeah. know. What do you think about this? Oh, ah. Okay. And then we go on to something else. And they're like, oh, what if on this time we do this? And then it flows. You gotta give yourself that grace period to just fucking pause. Got yes. It. Well, and um, I, I love what I want to share what Tiffany wrote. Um, so Tiffany put, "When I find myself in a downward space, I stop and pray for clarity. It is easy to be pulled into negative thoughts and feelings, but you have to tap into your inner self and count all your blessings." And then she wrote, uh, "Where did she put that one? I saw the other one. I loved it. There we go." There is a cause for pause. Yes. Taking time to reflect and praying has been great help for me. And, um, you know, I think about it in terms of, because I'm always with animals, you know, we have a lot of animals here. We keep growing, you know, and getting more. I was working on the front flower beds for the house because they had, they were just really in bad shape and they had been neglected for years. And <clears throat> I was working on them and my dog, uh, was just laying in the driveway because the, the sun was just coming down in the driveway and she just was laying there and she was just, she looked so peaceful. She looked so content, but then there's other times where she'd sit up and she would be laying in the driveway or somewhere on the grass, but she's sitting up and she, she's laying there with her upper body sitting up and just looking around. And then sometimes she would just close her eyes and like the breeze would go and she would just close her eyes. And I thought to myself, you know, it's interesting. Even animals do that. They they mm -hmm. take pauses. Sometimes it's not a pause to like listen necessarily to be on the alert. Sometimes it's just that relaxed pause, like to take it in. And how often do we do that? You know, how often are you driving somewhere and you pass by something that's just beautiful 
and you sort of look at it and you go, oh yeah, that looks really pretty today. And then that's it. You know, um, you, you don't take that moment to enjoy it. Like, like for mm -hmm. instance, what do we have coming up one week from today? We have the solar eclipse coming up today from one week from today. And in certain areas of the country, we're actually going to have a, a good portion of it covered. Like here, we're going to have about 90% of it covered. So uh, interestingly, my daughter's school actually is letting them out early that day because of the solar eclipse. And I'm thinking it's because when it's supposed to be happening is when they're going to be releasing the, the school and the buses are going to be driving. So I'm thinking they probably wanted people to be home just so that there's no issues, you know. Um, but I was excited because I wanted to be able to experience this with my children. So my both children will be home. We got our glasses and we're going to, to pause during that time to be able to watch it and experience it together because the next one is like nine years from now. So mm -hmm. crossing our fingers that it's not cloudy, but it's, it's, again, it's just about um, taking moments for yourself. You know, if you forget to do it in the morning, if you've got stuff to do or you didn't sleep well and you can't get up a little earlier, like sometimes 10 minutes earlier is really that hard. Make sure you do it sometime during the day. Like when you were talking about um, Henny's thing, reminding him to breathe, put a reminder on your phone so that it pops up sometime during the day and says, did you take your pause or take your pause? So that it pops up and you see it and you say, oh my gosh, and can you do it at this moment? You can, you know, you can take a pause while you're driving. You just turn everything off and you just are present in that moment, especially if it's like you're not weaving through traffic. That's a little bit more complicated. Good morning, Wanda. But um, it's just a matter of giving yourself that time. How many pauses can you take in a day? As many as you want to. There's mm -hmm. no... There's no, there's no limit. And, and then how long could they be as long as you want them to be, as long as you need them to be, you feel mm -hmm. them. If you say that I took a pause for two minutes and I feel good, then two minutes was great. If you feel like two minutes is over and you're like, I feel like I want to do more then do more. Let it sit there longer. You have the time. It, you should know yourself better than anybody around you. And uh, Tiffany, absolutely. You know, um, I don't make any plans without praying to Father Yahweh. I don't. People look at me like I'm like, why? Well, she prays. She believes in God. Absolutely. And let me tell you that that also is very calming. But when you take the pause, like the Badass Buddha says, remember, you got to make time for you. There's no, if, if normally it takes you 10 minutes to do something, but you're running a little late, then do five minutes. Your life depends on what you do first thing in the morning, giving gratitude to Yahweh. I always give gratitude that I woke up. You know why? Because I've been present when many people died in their sleep. So to me, it's imperative that when I wake up in the morning, before I even do anything, I'm praising and, and giving grace and giving gratitude that I woke up, that I can say thank you, Father Yahweh. So, and when you pause, remember, you know, we always try like um, mindfulness, you know, think positive, carve out the positive day for you. But you know what, in order for you to clean out your closet, you have to allow yourself that pause to think about or feel or hold that bad, that negative, that not so good, so that you can remove it. You know, you got to organize to eliminate. Remember, we had a show on that. So you have to experience those thoughts, those feelings, those wounds. In that pause, sometimes you got to make, sometimes we cannot pause. We cannot meditate because we're filled with so much. Yeah. That's not good for us. That's right. So don't ever let nobody tell you, oh, you just got to think positive. You got to shift your mindset you got to do this you got to meditate you know, you know what sit your ass down go revisit that pain pull that that terrible scar uh scab that didn't grow right because you kept picking at it pull it off look at it acknowledge that you went through it that you felt it that you caused it 
and then forgive and let it go. Know that is dear and then bid it adieu. And you can I say something? Can I can I say something? You said think positive, and I love it because really that's not correct because it really doesn't work. It's instead of think positive, feel gratitude. Because feeling gratitude will shift you, will shift your mood. So thinking positive, when you feel and when you're in such a way, you, you, you you're you're lying to yourself. You say, oh, I gotta think positive, I gotta be positive about this. Most of the time you're arguing with yourself. It's a, it's a it cognitive dissonance. You're arguing in your head going, but I don't feel that way. But I have to say that because they said I have to think positive. Stop, pause, and feel. Feel it all and then feel gratitude for feeling, for breathing. And for, for acknowledging living. it. Yeah. We cannot. Let me tell you something. You would never amount to your purpose in life unless you you fallen on your face several times, unless somebody pinched you so hard it left a bruise, and that could mean betrayal. That that can mean they left you. It can mean anything. When you grow, it is out of pain. You cannot grow. There's nothing that pushes you more with. Uh, you know, there's a meme that says when when a guy or a girl breaks up with their long term partner, you know, it takes them a month to have a Harvard degree, a car, a yacht, a mansion, because that's what you do out of pain. Is where you grow. You got to pause and you got to use discernment. You got to choose wisely for your life. And when you choose for you. First thing in the morning, there's nothing that can possibly be against you. But if you wake up in the morning with yesterday's bullshit, oh my God, what? Are, I didn't finish this. I got to do this. If that's your first thought in the morning, that's how your day is going to be. Trust me. You wake up in the morning, you go to bed. You're like, oh my God, I left seven things undone and I need them done by 12. Take your happy jack behind to bed. When you wake up in the morning, Give thanks in gratitude that you are awake so that you can proceed to complete your projects. Many people don't take that time to make that shift. I'm up. Thank you. Okay. Let me pause. What is priority? What do I need to do first? That pause puts so much into perspective. And Kathy, let me tell you something. Um, why it feels natural disaster they want to put fear and yesterday i had a big conversation with somebody you yep. can live in fear or you can live in faith because the the balance of life is death so regardless of what happens we're here today we're going tomorrow and i saw a meme where denzel washington said the most smartest thing ever and we know it but we don't realize it unless we hear somebody say it and he said have you ever seen a hearse driving to the cemetery and a U-Haul behind it? No, because you can't take shit with you. So while you are alive, you <laughs> take that part. Isn't that great? Can't, oh, nothing with you. So I don't have fear if, you know, but I do believe something is about to happen. I do believe that there, uh, you know, peoples in power are conspiring against us. I believe something, they're putting science over lives, over importance of people, over everything. And they're doing, they're, they're fucking some shit up, but that's me. But so I think when, when, when you look at it that way, like I'm not taking nothing with me. You learn to pause more during, during your day. And then you can say what's important and what's not. See, I've never been in competition with anybody. I'm so amazing in my own right. I'm a millionaire waiting to happen if I just push my ass to do something. But I know that what I'm capable of doing, I know that I am a creative. I know that I can come up with stuff. I can do stuff. I can just be sitting in a coffee shop, people watching and people wave because that's the energy I put out. So I don't worry about what I'm not getting done. I don't worry about who is ahead of me in the game. What I worry about is if you're taking my stuff. If you know me and you're taking my stuff, that annoys me. But other than that, you can't do nothing to me. Because if I've come up with ideas, which has happened, and people have taken it and run with it, I would be upset. And then I'm like, Father, eh. And then it was one out of two things. You know, they were never my friend and were only with me to ride my coattails 
without complimenting me, but they saw something in me just to see what they can take. And two, it was in mine to begin with. It came through me to offer it to the person who's not as creative as I am. Well, and that's I was used as a vessel. And to me, who are right now. That's why a pause is really important to understand that there is a collective consciousness. So, whatever creation that you have and you create and you have and you put out there and you say and you do, it the minute you think of it, it's it, it's out there. Is because that's mm -hmm. why it's so coincident. It's not it's not a coincidence when you come up with an idea and then you find out that like. Clear across the other side of the world, somebody came up with the same idea, but they just went forth with it. And you find out like a few months later that this other, this other person came and you're up like, like, how the hell is that even possible? Because that's the reality. It's this collective consciousness. So the thing is, is that when we pause, we make that decision too to decide if what we're creating, first of all, it allows us to create. Mm -hmm. And the pause allows us to lessen our stress levels. And it allows us to create and take that moment. But it also lets us decide what we want to do with that information. Yes. Where, where, what direction do we want to take it? Because if we choose not to put that information out for ourselves, it is out there for other people. But then there's the next step. Then we choose to put that information out there and we put it out there, but only to a certain level. But then we hold back. And again, somebody could just come in and take it because there nobody else knows you really put it out. So they come and take it and they run with it because they're that type of person. Not that they're a type of person to steal it means that they're the type of person to take action on it. And so you look at it and you go, well, that was my idea. And I came up with that. But it's like, but you chose to pause for the wrong reason yes. by not going forward. See, there's 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 multiple pauses in our life. Good morning, Priscilla. Um, there's multiple pauses in our lives. We have to make sure that when we take that that real beautiful pause, that that giving ourselves space and grace, that giving us ourselves time to create, time to think, time to feel, time to breathe, time to smell, time to see what's really in front of us. That mm -hmm. is the most beneficial pause because again, you are grounding yourself to your world. You're connecting yourself to what's in, around you, but you're also connecting yourself to your higher power, to God or whatever. And, and if you don't celebrate that, if that's not in your practice, you're still connecting to something above because it's, it's universal. It's a universal intelligence. It's a universal consciousness. You're connecting yourself to it. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's overwhelming for people to connect that way. But when you know yourself, you can ground yourself and connect and say, okay, I'm feeling this and I know what's going to happen. I know what I need to do for myself. And then you move forward as opposed to getting caught in this little bubble of self-pity and frustration where you're like lower, your, your vibrational levels are really low. And when you do that, you're just attracting more crap towards you as opposed mm -hmm. to just trusting in the process and saying, you know what? I am going to vibrate at a higher level. I am going to open myself up. There's, there's something called the cone of enlightenment and it's, or, or the cone of energy and all the lower vibrational stuff is at the bottom of the cone, but all the higher vibrational stuff like joy and um, grace and gratitude and enlightenment, they're all at the top and it, and they're more expanded, which allows you to take in a lot more as opposed to the bottom of the cone where it's contracted and it doesn't allow you to take in um, everything that you that that you mm -hmm. want to take in, you just keep taking in the frustrated stuff. Whereas when it's open like that, it's you're like your arms are open. It's expanded. Gurus talked about this. You know, if you have too much stuff that you're carrying in your baggage, you have no arms to be able to grab onto the good stuff that's coming. You have to drop that stuff. You have to drop yes. the baggage or the balls or whatever it is that you're holding. Um, I'm thinking of beach balls. Uh, for, with based on a, um, a documentary I saw, but it you don't have the ability to do it to, to to bring in if you don't stop and allow yourself the time and the space to bring it in. It's all up to you. You know, when you said something and it's key, um, people don't have what you said, the confidence 
you, you, you said something. And you know what? Uh, if something, <clears throat> you got to identify with yourself. Why does this frighten me? Why do I have anxiety to move forward? Because it's not about, uh, a lot of us go, let me tell you, a lot of us worry so much about what the next person has to say about us. A lot of us worry about who's watching what we're doing. A lot of us will only befriend people if they have X amount of, you know, they, I, I, I took a picture of it and I never sent it to you about us. There's even a book that talks about um, the likes because it became such a big thing that people would ask somebody instead of, hey, how you doing? I'm so-and-so, what's your name? What do you do? Whatever, you know, the basic questions, what's your favorite sexual position? I don't know, they can ask that too, it's allowed. Um, but now they're starting to say, oh, well, how many likes does that person have before I engage in something? Or not likes, how many followers? What's their following? I don't wanna participate unless they have X amount of following. And you could, you're, you're and that's the society we're in now. And it takes that chosen few. Again, it takes the chosen few to be reminded what life is about. And I've never liked, I've never associated myself with social media to the point where I will only mess with people if they had this or engage with people, or even invite people on Viva because they had X amount of likes and they can give me exposure. Why? Because we did it and they never shared it. So it yeah, depends on no difference. <laughs> it depends on the connections that that you make because of the spirit that you are. You can be a half-assed person believing the facade that you are this great grandeur creator of what you're doing and go out into the world and put that out there when it's not true. So you're always walking on your tiptoes because they might believe it, but you know you're lying. Okay? So show up in full armor. When you take that pause, what am I wearing today? Because you already know what your agenda is, right? The Vada says, well, I finally got clients, you know, chiropractic clients. I'm going to have three this week. So when she woke up today, she took that deep breath. Yes, you know, I, I'm I'm on the road to where I plan to be. Remember, plans change. So she's probably was hoping to get a couple clients before the end of the month. She probably has a whole roster that she can't even pause because she got what she wished for. You see? And you got to make the best out of it. But it takes but a moment to get up and give gratitude. And I don't care who you believe in. When I When I speak, I speak about Yahweh. That's my light, my truth, my way. Mm -hmm. Yeshua. So when that all happens, you have to realize you're not going to grow from just sitting on your ass. You know, you're not that potato that just sat there and it just started growing the, the white things. You have to pull yourself out of the pain in order for you to appreciate your game going forward. You, we don't appreciate anything until we almost lost it or lost it. Am I right? especially people. They don't appreciate you till you're no longer around. So, I mean, we've seen it happen with everything. When you take the pause, first thing in the morning, midday, right before you go to sleep, you're connecting with who you are, with the core of who you are. Yeah. And let's say you connect in the afternoon after you just had it or whatever, and you're like, damn, I wasted all that energy on that stupid shit. Okay, let's regroup. So the second half of the day, you're doing exactly what you need to do, how you need to do it, or you're not doing anything and you're just being. And you're listening to your favorite music and you might be hopping to it or you're dancing to it or you're putting on that pair of earrings you haven't worn in a while for a special occasion and you just realize, oh, I'm alive, I'm breathing, I'm pausing. Today's a good day to wear the earrings. That's what you need to do for yourself. When you take the pause, you are telling yourself, I have the right to live. Mm. Mm. And that That's pause, nice. And that pause will teach you that you are valid. That your choices are that, that little mustard seed that will boom, make a change that will trickle down. And then, you know, that if you want to see the 
changes in the world be the whatever the fuck the, whoever wrote it there's so many people attached to that quote be the change you want to see in the world it's a lady That's what you do it's every lady. time you take a pause you're contributing to humanity because when you take a pause for you that energy that you're putting out into the universe is felt by many people who are watching you do that you're, gain, you're giving them the opportunity to gain hope. When you pause, that's what you, you gain life. And when you gain life, you're gaining life for you, those around you, or those you don't even know. You know, I have a friend, Lewis. He lives in California now. But he likes to go to coffee shops. And he's a poet. He likes to go to coffee shops and sit and watch. And then depending where his energy takes him, He'll write a poem about the person he's looking at or the persons, if it's a couple or whatever. One day he was sitting there and he said, this, this couple seemed like they were bickering, that they were whispering, you know, just the gestures. He didn't hear nothing. So he wrote a poem about forgiveness. He wrote a poem about acceptance. And then as he was leaving, he stopped at the table and he says, you know, I was sitting over there watching you and I felt the need to write this for you. And he left it there and one of them came out into the parking lot and was so grateful that he gave them that. And Aww. sometimes, even if you're not a poet, just a hello or Ooh, that hat looks beautiful on you. When you pause to enrich people around you, you're wealthy. Yeah. And all it takes, it don't matter what you're going through. Arlene, how are you, beautiful? It doesn't matter what you're going through to be kind to someone outside of you so that it can boomerang back into you. Because when you truly smile in the midst of your pain, it feels like it heals you. A smile can heal you. Take the pause in your life. Let's all take a pause today. I don't care what time, even when you're sitting at lunch. And you're eating that salad when you really wanted a cheeseburger. And that's me. I'm talking about me. You <laughs> say, you know what? But this is for me. This salad is for me. It's for my longevity. It's, it's to, to cheat death an extra year so that I can matter. I can make things happen so that life matters when I'm no longer here. So... The pause, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, take another deep breath and pause. I had to do that at training. I love it. I love telling people they do. Everybody I say that to Buddha does the same thing they laugh. But I had to do training with the disabled adult men. And when we had to put them against the wall, when they were getting back, we had to tell them that's how they calm down. It worked. So if it works for people who we claim are mentally impaired, imagine what it can do for you that's supposed to be our same. Take a breath. Take a breath. Take another breath. And pause. Sometimes we need, we're so angry that we need to flush it out. And just, and just pause. And if you choose not to do nothing the rest of the day, you're doing a great thing because you probably would have fucked something up. Pauses save you from yourself. Yes. <laughs> Good. Well, and and we're 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 closing up towards the end of the uh, of the show, but it's it's so this whole month is about the living month. You know, we're going to be talking about growth. We're going to be talking about movement. We're going to be talking about um, what else did we say that we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about. Um, living, you know, through the eyes of a child, uh, being silly. We're going to talk about joy. Um, we're going to be talking about forward motion, um, living, laughing, loving. We're going to be talking about living, you know, like this is, this is a really, really important time. You know, we're, we're in spring, we're transitioning from that cold, you know, that, that's, that where a lot of people were kept inside to mm -hmm. growth. You know, things are blooming. I sent the picture to Gladiator Guru about the of this tree that I have in front yes. of the house. It's this huge weeping cherry tree. And it's just spectacular. It is just so pretty with the pink really blossoms is. that it has. Plus, it's weepy. You know, it just 
hangs down and and it's huge it's actually quite a large tree and it, and it sits right on my front porch where i have seating and you and there's there's a couple of flowering trees not to mention all the flowers that are that are popping up in the yard mm -hmm. take that moment and and look at it have you noticed the buds starting to bud on those trees life is coming up the birds are making different sounds than they did in the winter time and acknowledge all of this because this is when life is starting to come back up again and it's time for ours as well you know if winter was a little dormant for you a little slower for you you know oh i gained a little weight oh i didn't do everything i wanted to. that's all right it's done now is the time to just walk in it pause mm -hmm. but then move so that's and that's the beautiful thing is we're going to be talking about that dichotomy is the fact that we're starting off with pause but now we're telling you okay now take that breath in because here we go we're going to live we're going to enjoy we're going to feel everything we're going to smell everything we're going to see everything and if you don't like what you're smelling if you don't like what you're seeing then what are you going to do about it? It's like the idea of, you know, if your dog's in the house and the dog poops in the house, do you just cover it with a brain, you know, air freshener, or do you clean up the poop, wash the floor and get rid of it? And that will get rid of the smell because it'll be gone. But how many times have we just left it, figuratively speaking, the, the poop, just leaving, oh, I'll just, I'll yeah. put the, the thing there and I'll spray some stuff every time I smell it. It just covers it up. Enough of that. Because mm -hmm. if you're feeling a little stuck, if you feel like your life has been a little slower, you're not doing the things that you want to do or having the things you want to have in your life, that's because you've just been covering up the poop with a paper towel and spray. It's time to, to clean it up, clean it out, move, pause so you know which direction you want to move if you're looking at your journey and there's three choices in front of you for paths oh my gosh i don't know which one to pick i don't know which way i'm supposed to go i don't know what i'm supposed to do stop sit mm -hmm. pause ask for help maybe people will also come up beside you you can ask them for help but but you have to start with you and you have to sit and you have to connect and it may take a few minutes, it may take a few hours, it may take a few days, but sit and do it. And if you do this every single day, you will be clearer and clearer on where you need to go, what direction you are going in. Because sometimes the reason we don't wanna pause is because we know deep down inside the direction we are currently in is not where we're meant to be. And we invested so much time and it's so much gonna be so much harder to redirect ourselves so we just don't want to pause because we just refuse. And again, it's lying to yourself and it's refusing to face things. Face it. Pause. And when you get that feeling, it's, oh, gosh, OK, I know what I need. I have to quit that job. I can't do this anymore. I have to get out of that relationship. I have to get out of this environment. OK, don't be afraid. If you need assistance, the pause will allow you to ask the right people, including God, asking the right entity it's it's what is best for you it's very scary when you first have to go but then you know what happens is once you get there it's usually not as scary as you thought we bring it up no. and hype it up in our minds so much more than it needs to yeah there's i've met a lot of people like that they overthink it and then they add all the negatives as excuses to prevent them from doing it. And they have to do it. And then that's what happened. But listen, real quick, Iris said, and when you do that for someone, you do it from your heart, not because you want recognition. You know, that's not the problem. I do things from my heart. And I, I invite people to participate in what I'm creating. And it's not even about I want recognition. Is that people take ownership because I'm, I'm laissez-faire. So it's not recognition. When you do something, always do it from your heart. And if it doesn't work out, then guess what happens? You started it. You worked it. That's as far as it goes. That's, I believe in that. There's no coincidence. Kathy, your rose bush, well, that just means so much clarity was being born within you. It's white now. It was originally a long stem white rose, and it has transformed once again. Clusters of red blooms. That's beautiful. 
change, 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 pausing. De, uh, Shaniro, thank you for, for always for the motivation, knowledge, guidance, and connection. I will be pausing after this darn meeting. There's so much transformation happening. There is in the trees, in your flower bushes, and uh, Badass Buddha did send a picture of her, and I love, I love weeping willows. They're my favorite flower uh, trees anyway, but to have the cherry weeping willow was just extra. That was the cherry on. The cherry on top. <laughs> <laughs> So it's um, the, take time out, pause, but smell the flowers. You know what? Sway with the branches of the trees when the leaves start dancing upon them. Listen to the the rivers coming down. You, you have to pay attention to things happening around you for you to understand what's happening within you. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes you're so angry or you're so full of jealousy envy and hate and disappointment that you just missed the beauty that was sent to you to release that and you're holding on to all of that negativity and then say nobody understands you pause because it's nobody's business if people are extending their hand to help you be better grab hold of it because everybody is dealing with something Everybody needs to pause in their own life. Everybody has hard decisions to make. People have to let go of things, the, the only things they ever knew in, in their life up till now. People are going through things. Some bigger, bigger world altering things than others. You know, some people are devastated because now they have to get a new phone and they don't know which one to get. But it's still their devastation. So be kind. So when you're dealing with something, say, hey, you got a minute? There's certain people in my life that I can say, you got a minute? I just need to run something to you. What do you think about this? I don't know. I'm kind of stuck with it. And then they share their beautiful insight. And then you don't take, you don't swallow everything somebody says. When you ask somebody for advice, you listen. Because every other word they're saying is what you got to crochet together for your blanket. Yeah. Exactly. The beauty is that you can say, hey, listen, this is what's going on. What do you think? And you give somebody that. See, people like, I don't trust nobody. I trust everybody. I trust to give everybody an A until they fuck it up. And if you're not the true friend you say you are, eventually you will hang yourself. So I don't worry about that. Meet people where they are so you can learn where to place them. But if you know who you are, you know what you're about, the basics. You can go anywhere. You can do anything. You can meet as many people as you want. And you can bid adieu to those who came in to hinder. And you say, get behind me, Satan. Because that's your right. And it is your right to understand what you're going through. You can ask the questions, but you can't expect nobody to put your pieces back together. That's between you and Yahweh. Take the pause. Because you're worth it. Because you're beautiful. Because you're important. Take the pause. Thank you, Desiree. Yes, I hear Aritza. This was a project keeping that gray, gray. But, you know, I, I started out as Cruella de Vil. I told you when I woke up, I was like, ooh, <laughs> I look like a rabid raccoon and skunk put together. But yes. All right. Okay. So we will see you on Thursday. And uh, yeah, this is this is the living month. So get ready to live and get ready to be enlightened because uh, you're going to be enlightening yourself. We're just mm -hmm. giving you information. It is up to you. And this is a great time to connect to your world. It really is. It's just a fun time. Spring is just right at the peak of season, right? Yep, exactly. Right at the peak of growth. This is the best season for you to take hold of your life because not only will you be blooming, but you're going to, you're going to experience Yahweh's blessings of everything blooming as it should, when it should, and yep. you should be growing right along with it. Open up like that flower and accept right. the life. So great. We'll to. see you guys Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. And, um, it's been great. So from the Badass Buddha, remember, be you, be real, and be extraordinary. And from the Gladiator Guru, we have to have a blessed day. And while you're doing that, remember to breathe in your beauty and breathe out the bullshit. Namaste.